everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tina and on behalf of Informa Connects and ATD, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar. I hope all of you are doing well and keeping safe and practicing social distancing. Uh, so today we have an interesting and an insightful webinar coming up. Um, so the webinar's topic is adapting learning in the time of COVID-19 uh, insights from the front lines in China. So this webinar panel will be led by Wei Wang, a senior director at ATD Global. Uh, Wei will be joined by our amazing panelists, Edward Tu, he's the dean uh, and executive director from AstraZeneca, and Jenny Wu Wan, and she's the director of HR at Koher uh, KNB. Uh, front. Both of, both of them joining us from China and Wei is joining us from the US. Uh, so before we begin today's webinar, I just want to go over a few housekeep, housekeeping rules. Um, the webinar would run for 60 minutes and uh, 45 minutes of that would be spent on the panel discussion and the last 15 minutes would be for the Q&A. And throughout the panel discussion, I encourage all of you to put in your questions on the question box, uh, any questions that you may have, and when it's time for Q&A, we will take your questions. And please note that we are recording this webinar and we will be sharing a link to the recording with all of you in a week's time. And without any further delay, I would like to hand over the session to Wei Wang from ATD Global. Thank you, Tina. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to today's session. Uh, we are very delighted to partner with Informa on this special um, webinar to talk about adapting learning the time, in the times of uh, COVID-19. Um, and uh, I, I uh, appreciate my colleague from China, uh, Edward and, Shang, uh, and Jenny, join us from Shanghai. Um, as a Chinese who has been working in U.S. during the past almost 20 years uh, and being the head of the ATD Global team, I have been observing my colleague from China uh, fighting and um, you know, navigating through this COVID-19 tough time since almost January. Um, and of course, now we're seeing this happening spread around the globe and everybody are uh, fighting the same <clears throat> same challenges. So we thought it would be really great to hear from them uh, what they have learned from the past several months and uh, what they are doing to prepare and people go back to normal. So today we would like to have um, some, uh, we really wanted to keep this uh, as very interactive. Um, and I have a few questions for them and I'll be happy to share my insight uh, from uh, observation of other organization as well. And I would also um, take the opportunity to invite all of you to participate in the conversation. So we have about six, seven questions we're going to, uh, topics we're going to discuss today. And I'm going to have ask you some questions as well to, um, so, and uh, of course, through the time, if you have any questions, please also send in chat uh, so we can um, answer them either through the conversation or at the end. Okay. So, of course, we all know this COVID-19 um, outbreak has been impacting our business significantly. Um, so first, I'd like to um, ask our audience. Um, so uh, as, Gina, uh, as Tina mentioned, I'm from US right now, and uh, Edward and Jenny from China. I'd like to invite you to just send in the chat box, where are you from? Uh, where are you currently uh, based? Where, where do you join us today uh, for today's session? So if you could, you could just uh, using the chat box, send us where you um, join us today, that would be great. I'll give a minute to, so for you to find the chat box function, it's on your right side, right? Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of answers coming in on the questions box. On the question it. box. Yeah. Oh, I don't see that. So I'm seeing a lot of Dubai. So maybe I'm Tina, you can come Dubai. That would be great. Yeah. So I see a lot of Dubai, a UAE. I see uh, South Africa, uh, Bahrain, Lebanon, Ghana, Germany, okay. Saudi okay. Arabia, Bangladesh, Egypt. Okay. Um, Canada. 
Okay. Awesome. It's really mm -hmm. great to see we have a yeah. uh, very diverse um, audience join us today. Um, and definitely, I think everybody is really curious about what happened in China and, and what been, uh, they've been going through and what they are doing to prepare for the uh, coming back to work, right? So, um, and another question I would like to uh, have our audience to answer first, and I will turn that to our panelists to answer. So, how does this impact your business? Is your business going up? And I know in some of the cases it is. Uh, and or going down, or it is actually missed for some products going up better and some is going down. So if you could also and send in the chat box um, to just say up, down, or mix, that'll be great. So Tina, if you could read us the answer. I see a lot of down and mixed. I don't okay. see an up yet. Nobody going up. I know, <laughs> like you work from Apple, Amazon, uh, or Netflix. I know definitely going up. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, I see one one up. I see one up right. there. They say they um, they manufacture which company he worked for. <laughs> yeah, they say it's from they manufacturers of medicines, so it makes sense. Oh, okay. that makes sense. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely you have very significant uh, impact on our business. So now let me. Um, I will invite Jenny. So can you share with us? what um, Kohler uh, does in China and how this impacting your business in China so far. Sure, thank you Wei and Tina. Uh, good afternoon everyone. It is great pleasure for me uh, being here with you. And I would like to take this opportunity to share some of our, what we are doing, our pain points, our challenges with you. Feel free to ask a question during the session or after sessions. So first, I would like to introduce uh, who we are, where I come from. Uh, Kohler is a plumbing uh, products company. Uh, we mainly, you know, produce like our uh, plumbing products. And uh, I think if you use our plumbing products, maybe, our, you know, it's a good brand for you to choose. Uh, but we also have uh, other business like our uh, power engine and uh, hospitality, like golfing. Uh, so it's quite a diversified business unit uh, as a Kohler company. It's a global company. We have over 30,000 employees globally. In China, we have about 9,000 employees. And uh, uh, I am uh, uh, actually the, um, you, you, uh, in charge of uh, HR uh, for China for KMB business. So uh, as to the question, how is the COVID-19 outbreak in impacting our business? It's actually, you know, similar to many of your companies, sir. It's actually um, like uh, we are mixed because, you know, we have uh, both offline and the uh, online business. So during the outbreak, uh, especially in the, uh, at the end of January and also at the beginning of February, we see a lot of slowdown in the retail. Uh, retail store because all the retail store are, are, are closed and then um, we have lockdown for all the manufacturing sites. In China, we have over 15 manufacturing sites, so all the plants are closed. So we see that uh, uh, really, you know, impact our business. But uh, for our online sales, you know, it's really goes up because, you know, uh, we do uh, uh, many new business model like, uh, ups, uh, you know, live broadcasting or screaming. So that help our business grow a lot. So it's kind of, you know, mix. Okay, great. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, that I think uh, many people probably will um, have the same uh, similar uh, experience as well. Um, the um, the, the uh, on the ground activities went down, but the online activities went up. Okay, um, so uh, Edward, how about you? Uh, before <laughs> answering it, uh, this question, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm very pleased to communicate uh, in this way uh, with uh, you. Uh, now I'm in charge of AstraZeneca University. AstraZeneca is a pharma, pharmacy company, and uh, we are ranking number one among all MNC companies in China so far. Uh, actually, uh, our business is, uh, is also uh, impacted by this uh, COVID-19. So I would like to introduce some basic uh, background for your reference. So some provinces, the GDP uh, is, uh, was reduced by uh, uh, average uh, 30%. So even uh, Wuhan city uh, from uh, Hubei province, uh, GDP was reduced uh, by 50%. So with this background, uh, I think uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, impact uh, everywhere, uh, uh, every e industry. So 
but uh, um, if we reviewed uh, Q1 uh, performance of my uh, company, uh, although we uh, encountered uh, this kind of challenge, we achieved 19% uh, uh, growth comparing uh, the last year. So mm -hmm. I think this is uh, good news for our company, but uh, we are nervous uh, to think how to overcome uh, to achieve success in Q2, Q3, until the end of uh, this whole year. So this is uh, for uh, for your reference. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Edward. Um, so definitely, I think where we see uh, overall in China, I think there are several factors uh, impacting the business. Um, in the uh, first is because of the pandemic and people are staying home. Uh, so they cannot go to the physical site to do the activities as they usually do or doing the purchase. Um, and this is impacting, you know, like manufacturing they cannot produce. And this is impacting like restaurant and all the service industry and tourism industry. Uh, absolutely, the Chinese New Year was one of the biggest season for the China tourism industry. And I think that's also, you know, a lot of tourists go to Dubai and go to other parts of the world as well. So without those activities, I think that directly impacting many business. Uh, another part I think where we see is also you know, the fear of the um, of spending. All right? So even now, uh, activity come back to normal, but people are still very slowly and hesitating to spend. I think that that's is going to linger longer, uh, even you know when we come back to this new norm. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so. Let's move on to the next question. So during this pandemic, you know, um, so what have you done as a, a head of HR or head of a TV to meet the business need? Uh, I would like to um, invite Jenny uh, maybe to share your insight on this question. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, even though, you know, the pandemic happened there uh, at the Chinese New Year and then we all in holiday, but I think the whole holiday, um, at least the HR team didn't really have the holiday. We actually start work from day one and there, I still remember it's the first day of Chinese holiday. It's a kind of a, you know, kind of chaos and a kind of a panic for us and everything is in a messy. But we still need to shift and focus on how we can help the business or gone through this uh, pandemic. So um, we actually come out a kind of program called Shift. You know, the shift actually in several perspectives, like, you know, how we can shift in mindsets uh, and how can we shift in the, um, the way how we uh, deliver our training and then how we shift the technology, how we use their platform to deliver the training. And also um, the last two things are uh, shift the experience uh, for our customer and then shift the content we need to focus on. So I just uh, explore a little bit on this shift, five items. Um, first, the mentality shift. I think everyone uh, need to get through the panic, get through the chaos, and I need to focus on what I can do uh, to impact the business and also to calm down and focus on the business. So that's kind of mentality shift. From a uh, second side, there is um, a you know, technology shift and their um, colleagues actually are a, a kind of a traditional company. We, we don't get used to like working from home or using virtual, but we have to uh, learn how to use virtual and how to work effectively virtually. So um, and we use like our uh, you know, Office 365 and then uh, a lot of the tools like Teams, like uh, OneDrive and then to work um, virtually. And then we also need to learn how to you know give a virtual recognition virtual communication virtual meetings so that's actually how we utilize the technology shift and um, like for the you know customer experience shift even during the pandemic we still need to focus on end customers you know end users and how we can help them to get through this uh, pandemic and how we still can offer their you know, um, like a customer service and then using the virtual call or using the telephone and then also even help them to buy those, you know, masks or, or those things, you know, it's very short uh, in this uh, pandemic period. And uh, for the content shift, you know, uh, from learning TND side, you know, we actually focus on three things. The first thing is our education of COVID-19. What is COVID-19 and how we can identify COVID-19, prevent COVID-19, because it's pretty new to us, to everyone. 
So we do a lot of education sessions over the week, over the virtual and also do, uh, through the video. And the second content is uh, how to work virtually, you know, and then how to give a recognition communication virtually. It's uh, totally new to us. And how to lead virtually, even to those leaders, they never, you know, lead their teams through the virtual. And then in remote side, they have to, you know, in charge of their team face to face. And the last thing, the content we focus on is uh, really, you know, focus on their, we call it sharpen the saw. You know, during this uh, slowdown period, everyone needs to sharpen their saw. Everyone needs to increase their skill and knowledge, like prior knowledge, like technical skill, like, you know, digital skills. And the last thing, uh, I, I think, you know, it's, uh, it's a really, you know, shift uh, to how the way we deliver the sessions, you know, Obviously, we use a lot of uh, virtual session, webinar, and also uh, those e-learning and mobile learning as well. So that's uh, how we uh, adjust our T&D function to meet business needs. Mm, okay, that's great. Um, and Jenny, I think that's really well said. Um, I know many of my HR colleagues, they are um, probably one of the business group uh, during, that, uh, the, during that time and when uh, a lot of people are staying home and but HR people are the one of the first to come back to work virtually and uh, preparing people um, uh, through this tough time. And uh, at ATD um, seven weeks ago when we are uh, decided to uh, let everybody go home to work from home, one of the first thing our HR people did was to uh, send people to take the courses. Uh, to about uh, leading virtually, work virtually. So uh, that's one one of the things we see that you know HR people are playing playing an even more critical role uh, during this time because we are the one at the front line um, as to uh, help to facilitate this change. Uh, so I think we are talking about you know HR people or training people are also essential workers. Um, so that is a really good. Thanks for sharing that. You know, there's definitely a lot of things has been keeping you guys busy. Um, so next, I'd like to come to um, uh, ask Edward. Uh, as Jenny mentioned, and also we hear a lot from people, is about this uh, shifting of uh, delivering learning from our traditional face-to-face um, -face classroom training to online uh, training or virtual training. Um, so how did your company adjust this change and how did your team, what did your team do? And, and of course, at a follow-up question, will, um, will this be a continual trend after people go back to work? Uh, before I were you answer, I would like to ask our audience to answer this question as well. So what do you think? Do you think this online training will be still a trend or do you think people are still going to do a lot of virtual learning? even when they go back to work, even when the time go back to normal. Do you think a yes, no, or you don't know? Okay, so uh, Tina, if you could help us read out the answer, that would be great. It's, it's all yes. I'm seeing all yes and one no. Uh, only one no, okay. Okay, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, with that, um, I will I'll have you to answer this question. And what do you think? Is it gonna be yes or no? Uh, I, I think uh, it depends. Uh, so uh, let me introduce uh, some experience in the past several months. At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, uh, everybody uh, had to stay at home uh, and no, cho no other choice to select. Uh, and uh, we could not uh, return to the, uh, our uh, working place. So uh, we provide uh, uh, the total online uh, training solutions uh, to covering every employee. But uh, the first uh, uh, priority is to ensure our employee safety. So our top management team uh, provide uh, enough mask to everywhere, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to our employee and, uh, and their family. Uh, to let them uh, let, let them feel safety. Uh, so I think this is uh, uh, our first task at the beginning. And uh, our training team provides the total solution uh, last uh, two weeks. So focus more on the knowledge related, uh, including disease knowledge, product knowledge, competitive uh, competitor knowledge, and etc. And we also invite a marketing team to our uh, AstraZeneca University platform 
to let sales team understand uh, marketing strategy deeply to enhance the foundation for the upcoming. Uh, if we recover, I think we can uh, grasp the opportunity uh, strongly. So we built the foundation in the past, uh, in the uh, during the first phase. So, and afterwards, uh, uh, some cities uh, situation is bec uh, was becoming uh, better and better. Uh, and uh, we encourage uh, our sales team to interact with our physician face-to-face uh, -face or, se or uh, select other uh, channels. So we provide a guideline to interact uh, our HCP through multi-channel uh, wasting ways, including WeChat, uh, uh, telephone call, as an uh, online live uh, conference and elect cetera. So that's why uh, we achieved uh, the better uh, performance in Q1 compared to other pharmacy uh, companies. I think I think this is one of the secrets uh, I could uh, uh, share with you here. And uh, uh, so now uh, most of cities in China recover already. And uh, today uh, we finished uh, the first uh, uh, offline uh, training in, in my uh, university. And uh, mm -hmm. after this, uh, uh, live broadcasting, I will separate with my team uh, tonight. So I um, think this is a good beginning for us. But although the pandemic is going uh, away uh, in China, but we should uh, pay more attention to. And uh, I think uh, OMO model uh, will play the important role in the future. Uh, so I think uh, OMO is a key uh, way for us to uh, overcome uh, challenges in the future from now. So OMO, which stands for online, merge, offline. I think this is a very, very important uh, method for us to think uh, from now, how to upgrade uh, uh, our platform, how to uh, upgrade uh, our uh, digital capability, and how to um, rebuild our platform uh, through on OMO model. So I think uh, uh, this uh, OMO uh, model uh, trend uh, will be the very important uh, trend after pandemic. So this is my opinion. Okay, thank you, Edward. I think that's uh, definitely uh, very well said. Um, so from what we have been seeing overall, um, what ATD have been seeing is definitely there's the uh, uh, of course, during the past almost six months, part of my job is really working with our partners and our members around the world to think about how to deal with the, this pandemic. And a lot of, of course, the face-to-face -face activities being turned into online activities. Um, so what we've been seeing, ATD has been following, you know, doing the state industry research for the past almost 20 years. What we've been seeing that um, the overall uh, the percentage of using technology to deliver training has been significantly increased during the past years, even before the pandemic, right? So the percentage uh, right now, on average, the industry is about 50% of the learning has been conducted through some type, type of technology. That could be e-learning, virtual learning, mobile learning, all those. And so that trend will continue to grow. Um, and this pandemic, it really speed up that uh, that progress. Um, so because I think it just like, you know, a lot of people in China, I think in other part of the world too, people still value so much about this face-to-face -to -face interaction. And I think that will never go away. Um, so being a trainer and I think being a facilitator, that face-to-face -face interaction is always going to be there. But I think this pandemic has really helped people to understand that, you know, sometimes that we really cannot have face-to-face. -face. And sometimes Actually, some of courses is going to work better online. So ATD has been delivering virtual training since 2007. So a lot of our ATD courses are available online. Uh, the reason people don't like online is online training. Sometimes it's not because this format is not good. It's because some of the courses are not well designed. Uh, for example, you know, when you have a face-to-face -face interaction, you need to have about like every 10, 15 minutes, you need to have a face to, uh, you need to have some interaction engagement with audience, right? But when you're doing uh, something online, you need to have every five minutes. 
So, you know, so the, all the design activities need to be adjusted for this online platform. Uh, that's why an ATD had these two courses, design virtual learning and facilitate virtual learning. So and what we see, uh, the feedback we hear from people is, uh, you know, some of the online experience is actually better than offline. Um, but would it be replacing all the offline? Absolutely no. So whatever said OMO, like online merge offline, or sometimes we call it blended learning, I think that's definitely a, a trend. Uh, what we've been hearing from organization is definitely even we go back to the norm, new norm, uh, the long line learning is not going to go, go away. It's going to continue to uh, increase than we used to be, uh, but it's going to be more like a blended learning approach. Um, and so having a good blended learning strategy will be critical for your organization. So you can really make decision on what is good for online learning and what need to be still maintained that face to face and then how to blend those two approaches together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, I would mm -hmm. like to take this opportunity to deliver my thanks to your team. Uh, last month, my uh, key talent people uh, received uh, ATD uh, training, uh, especially as a uh, virtual facilitation and design uh, content related. Wow. And uh, mm -hmm. all of them are very, very uh, sat satisfied with this kind of uh, uh, training content uh, and uh, I will organize one uh, special workshop for how to apply uh, this new technology especially the facilitation virtual skill uh, at the uh, this uh, 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 on, on, on this Friday yeah and mm. uh, how to apply uh, facilitation uh, through virtual learning and how to design virtual content I think uh, ADD has planned for uh, resource for for us to uh, to, to, to select it's mm. good thank you thank you i think that's a where it's very helpful because i think people just assume that you can do training uh face to face and then you can do training online which people yeah. don't realize that it's actually there's really a special skills that you need to obtain um so i think it's really important that you know if you are organizing this make sure you give the tools uh, to your team so that they really know how to design an effective online learning experience and deliver the online learning experience. Okay. Great. So, um, so next one for now will be um, for Jenny. So now um, I know people has been going back to work uh, for a while. And how do you prepare uh, people um, go back to this new norm? Yeah, you know, sir, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you know, when the pandemic starts, sir, actually HR team is sir, crazy busy. Now, you know, we are getting ready for the bounce back and then how we can actually uh, compete with our competitor and then try to lead uh, with them. And then that's a kind of question for us. So um, the question for the whole HR team and the even TND team is uh, how we can prepare the business for the ready for the readiness of the bounce back. Uh, there are several things we are doing now. And then first, you know, uh, due to this uh, pandemic, uh, what we can learn from this, you know, what kind of opportunity we have, such as, uh, um, is there any changes or opportunity to our selling models? Or is there any uh, changes to our product uh, scale? For example, we, we just launched a touchless product and their hygiene product and cleaning product that's really well received by the consumer consumers in the market because they are expecting those uh, new products. And also, you know, we need to think about uh, uh, for the business uh, rebounding, uh, what we can learn by like a supply chain side, you know, how can, how can we be more visible to the global supply chain? As we said that, you know, the globe is uh, round and then we actually source our material and then source our products globally, not just from China. So whether we can uh, get our uh, supply chain system better after this pandemic. And we just mentioned that, you know, this pandemic really speed up our digitalization uh, upgrade. You know, maybe in the past, we still wondering or, or still, you know, like uh, say that, you know, we got enough time. But actually, through this pandemic, we think we need, need to speed up uh, the digitalization transformation. So we have to look at all the consumer based or market based, or, uh, even, you know, like uh, other uh, so like supply chain sales uh, interface their systems like CRM, CXM, those new words, you know, those new platforms. So that really help us. 
um, from TND side, you know, we need to help business like facilitate business to think through all those things, business model, products, platform, digitalization. And the second is, you know, from skill sets, you know, we need to think about what are the future uh, skill sets needs, you know, like our uh, maybe we will touch this later, but I just, uh, you know, put a, like one or two skill sets we think are really important. For example, smart factory, smart automation factory, it's really in need. You know, if we can make automation better and then we don't need to rely on a person, right? I mean, even we got stuck, we got locked down, we still can produce uh, the products. And the second skill is digitalization. It's marketing digitalization, HR digitalization, everything is related to AI. And then that's also very important to the business. So that's actually the two skills we need to prepare for our associates for the future. And uh, the last thing, you know, from TND side is uh, uh, how we can, you know, make ourselves stronger, you know, like, uh, uh, even like uh, we need to learn uh, how to support business virtually and uh, what we also need to learn how to use a blended learning to support business and even learn how to facilitate um, business for their rebound or uh, those are new category. So that's uh, actually what I want to share with the audience. Mm, okay. That's very good. I think it's just like, um, I think it, that, that's where more and more we see that HR people and talent development people has been at the front line uh, where the business is heading. Um, so like before, we are usually the order taker, right? So the boss said, we're going to go here and train people. But now we see more and more the HR people, the talent development people need to really to think to be a future readiness, right? To think about what's next for our business and then um, um, take step early to prepare people for it. Um, like uh, Jenny mentioned, uh, prepare for the business shift uh, to foresee what um, business are heading next and um, and then back from there to see what kind of training or what kind of skills we need to or what kind of resources that we need to prepare for the um, for the audience. And of course, and I think uh, um, as we in US gradually come out of it, it's still a long way to go for us. It seems like, but now people are starting thinking about going back to business. And also we need to think about even just simple things, right? People are now used to work from home. And how do you make sure they're shifting the mindset back to say, hey, now you, you need to come to work every day uh, and feel safe at the work environment, right? So what can you do to make people to shifting the mindset? And of course, uh, the balance of their life um, because the school is still off and then there's other logistic things that you need to help people prepare for. So I think HR people and you know our talent one people is really play a critical role either to prepare them for the job and prepare them to have this really good uh, life and work balance. Um, so we are the truly essential worker here. Okay. Yeah, we, I just want to add one more point. I think it's yeah. also very important. Like a crisis is also the opportunity for you to test and develop your young talent. I think, you know, so mm -hmm. in Colo, we actually form our, like hustle teams, you know, to help them work on certain challenges. And they're, because they are very creative, they have a lot, they are technology savvy. So we have them to uh, address uh, several business uh, challenges and then they work in teams and also they help business to go through this uh, pandemic. So that's actually a good opportunity for us to test and uh, observe and also grow and develop them. Mm, that's a really great point. I, I think we see that a lot as well. I think Edward, you actually share with me that you um, through, through this crisis, we see a lot of young people in the 90s who were born in 90s or uh, 2000 later, and they are the ones really step up, right? Being on the in nurses and doctors and then uh, or in the company, uh, being reacting to um, and helping the organization to go through this tough time. Um, it definitely, yeah. we see this crisis bring people up closer together. Uh, because people really cherish, you know, the job and, you know, just our life and uh, the community support, right? Edward, do you have anything to add to this one? Yeah, uh, uh, there, uh, there is one uh, famous saying uh, by Chuchar, never let a good crisis uh, go to waste. So mm -hmm. in the past several months, younger generation, uh, so actually uh, they are very, very brave and uh, Many, uh, so, so thousands of uh, uh, doctors and nurses went to Wuhan city uh, to, to, to save more and more uh, patients. So, and we uh, were 
uh, impacted by many, many uh, stories. Uh, so two stories uh, happened in Wuhan. So I think this is a, a good uh, opportunity for us to uh, inspire uh, this whole country. And because the young generation is uh, a future, is our future of this country. So I think uh, this is an opportunity from this perspective. Um, I, I'm confident uh, for uh, China's uh, future. So I think this is uh, just uh, at one point. Okay, that's really great. Actually, that's a great uh, learning to, uh, to um, our next questions as well. Um, so, um, you know, if there's, uh, what do you think, Edward, so the, this question will be for you. What do you think is going to be, you know, the upcoming challenges in the next six months? Um, you know, how, how are you preparing for those challenges? And even now, companies slowly go come back and you can start to finally deliver the face-to-face -face training. What do you think are the, what do you think are most of the challenges um, in the next few months? Yeah, although uh, China is more safety than other countries uh, now, uh, most uh, of our cities uh, recover already and uh, children can go to school uh, from now. So, but uh, we live in the same global village. Uh, that's why I shared many times with uh, other friends internally and externally how to overcome the difficulties together. Uh, so that's why uh, and, uh, I uh, communicate with uh, US, uh, European uh, colleagues, uh, and I also, that's why uh, I agreed to join this uh, session uh, to share with uh, our experience. So uh, the faster we overcome uh, the difficulties, I think it's an opportunity we can grasp together. And, uh, you know, uh, some countries uh, uh, stopped uh, um, foreign exchange so I think uh, it, it impact uh, every uh, everywhere uh, globally. So and uh, this uh, uh, crisis will last uh, at least uh, several months. Uh, so maybe we are until this end of year. I don't know. Uh, and uh, with this background, uh, we need to find uh, potential. Uh, no, first of all, we need to be confident. I think confidence is the first important thing. Uh, so uh, this is, if you are the leader, uh, you should uh, uh, demo the uh, confidence before your team. If you are the business partner of training as a business leader, you should uh, energize every leader. Uh, so through, uh, at any time, anywhere, I think this is the uh, first important thing for us to remind ourselves every day. Uh, the second, uh, I think uh, uh, we should uh, uh, find uh, um, a potential opportunity uh, to meet uh, unmet needs. I think, uh, for example, uh, so in the past several months, uh, our physician, uh, our uh, HCP uh, cannot connect uh, their uh, patients and the patients could not uh, go to the hospital. Uh, so that's why we designed the uh, a platform uh, in time to uh, connect uh, physician and HCP uh, quickly. So uh, afterwards, uh, uh, patients can approach treatment uh, and uh, uh, with, with medicine uh, in time, and uh, HCP can provide advice uh, how to uh, uh, how to recover uh, all patients. So I think. Uh, we should, pro, uh, we should design uh, in this way to meet uh, unmet needs. And uh, uh, afterwards, uh, uh, even uh, event uh, cannot uh, impact uh, yourself. It is your response to the event uh, uh, make, can make decision. Uh, I think this is, uh, so you should select your uh, reaction uh, more positive, more positive. You can find, uh, uh, potential opportunity uh, as always. So this is uh, my uh, experience uh, uh, for your reference. Uh, actually, in the past uh, one month, we organized uh, social learning, uh, group learning uh, through the, uh, this kind of similar way. Every, every night, we will spend one hour to invite uh, our regional sales manager 
our top uh, director and even uh, our general manager uh, to share best practice what happened in the past uh, several days. It, uh, maybe, uh, maybe sometime uh, what happened uh, today and uh, uh, what's your, uh, <clears throat> how to handle the uh, situation and uh, how to discuss with your team, uh, make decision together instead of pushing your team, go as the traditional way. So this is very important. Mm, okay, thank you, Edward. Uh, definitely, yeah, I think I agree with you. Uh, it's definitely in the next coming months and years, maybe, uh, we're still facing very severe challenges. Uh, economy downturn um, and, you know, um, and also uh, the faster change, right? So the company need to be more agile um, and we need to be more uh, flexible. So I think that from the TV uh, professional point of view, I think we need to be even more close to the business lines uh, to be their business partner, to understand their needs and to be uh, more creative delivering the solutions. Uh, I think that's, you know, so the role of the HR people, uh, talented one people are even more critical. Uh, we are being this change a, um, agent. Uh, this is more important than ever. Um, so, Edward, you just mentioned really good point, like don't let any uh, crisis uh, go waste, right? So, what's coming out of this? And there are definitely some new opportunities um, that are created for this pandemic, although there's really a terrible, this is really a terrible time and very sad for many families, but, you know, everything has two sides. Um, so, what are the good opportunities to come up uh, for um, uh, people, um, uh, for talent development professionals or HR people? I'd like to invite our audience, just type of your thoughts, like what are the new things coming up for you, the new opportunity for you, um, that you, or you know, what are the new things you think you could do um, you know, as the talent development people? I'm seeing um, explore new learning tools, okay. business continuity. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's and all. Uh, smart tools, cost effective measures, e learning, blended learning, crisis management, upskilling. Upskilling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. That's good. So, Jenny, uh, um, may I have you to share what you think? Uh, what are the new opportunities that are coming up? Yeah, in addition to just uh, the audience, just to mention like uh, upskilling, you know, like uh, crisis management or cost uh, metrics. Uh, so on and so forth. I think uh, there are other opportunities like our, I just mentioned that, you know, we, we can find the opportunity to speed up the uh, digital transformation and uh, spend uh, more, more time and more efforts and even dollars or uh, investment in the platform. So this is one opportunity. The second opportunity, um, uh, where you just mentioned that, you know, it's real critical for um, like the overall organization to be agile, you know. So it's uh, actually the opportunity for TD department work with business leader to review our organization and to see where we there's opportunity for us to streamline and then to reduce the layer and make the decision making faster. And that the third opportunity, because we are in the crisis mode, everything is faster, right? I mean, everything can break the rules. So how can we leverage that kind of practice in the in the pandemic period and uh, make a future, um, you know, like uh, just uh, uh, break the bureaucracy and also make the, our decision faster to address the business needs? So that's a kind of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, definitely, I think. Um, you know, change is hard, uh, but change also bring opportunities. Um, and I think it's been really wonderful to see, um, I mean, talent development people, HR people around the world has been creative, uh, has been uh, tirelessly uh, working on the solutions to help their business. Uh, this is a tough time, but this is also the time for us to step up. Um, and in, uh, in order to step up, I think it, you know one of the areas that we really all of us need to do is to improve our capabilities. Um, so that's actually lead to um, my next point here. Uh, I would like to just take a few minutes to share with you. Uh, in 2020, uh, one of the things uh, like AT, um, uh, the you know very important milestone is for for us in the talent development um, field is ATD released our brand new. Uh, talent development capability capability model 
Um, one of the things that ATD, apart from many other organizations, is ATD's continual research on the research, uh, on the competencies and capabilities for people working in the talent one field. Uh, during the past 40 years, ATD has been really checking and leading the involvement of our profession. So this is our ninth, the largest um, uh, uh, research and the, the newest uh, capability model. It divided the capability into uh, three areas. So this model is really help people in the talent development field to uh, understand what are the important capabilities, knowledge or skills for them to be successful uh, right now and in next five years. So it is you know, um, for the present, but it also leading us for the future. Um, so this model is really divided all our capability into uh, three parts, um, starting with building personal capability. And then and the second part, the bucket is developing professional capability. And the third part is impacting organization capability. So the fourth part of develop, building personal capability is really about as a people, as a person, how do we develop ourselves? What kind of skills are critical for us to be successful? Right, so including communication, emotional intelligence and decision making, uh, collaboration and leadership, uh, cultural awareness um, and inclusion. Right, so when we develop more and more global content, how do we be more conscious of our, our audience? Um, project management, um, uh, compliance and ethical behaviors, and lifelong learning. Right? Like being learning people, we need to invest time to learn ourselves. So I'm very glad to see we have a lot of people join us today take your time to learn with us. Uh, the second as, um, uh, bucket is developing professional capabilities. This is the bread and butter for us to looking at, you know, what are the key skills that we have to help our organization to develop solutions. So that including learning science, understand the science of learning, like adult learning theory, um, you know, brain-based uh, theory, all those, instructional design, training delivery, and those are not just for face-to-face uh, -face training, it's really talking about all learning solutions, virtual learning, being part of it, blended learning, uh, being part of it, technology applications, uh, understand how to man uh, manage knowledge, uh, career development and leadership development, and coaching uh, within the organization, and of course, evaluating impact of all the different solutions, not just classroom, uh, all the solutions. And the third part is, which is also really, really critical, I think, to elevating our status as a business partner, is how we impacting organization capabilities. That including, you know, you need to really understand the business, have a good business insight, understand where your industry is heading and where you, what your organization needs for now and for the future. Uh, being a good consultant and business partner, understand how to interpret the business need and having a productive conversation with your uh, business, uh, be, with your business. Uh, organization development and culture building uh, and talent strategy and management. Performance improvement, how do we uh, leverage uh, our learning and the other talent development professional uh, uh, approaches uh, with other uh, HR and evaluation performance improvement approach. Uh, change management, of course, how can we help facilitating changing, help people to have a more smooth transition um, uh, being uh, analyzed data, data and uh, analytics. And uh, last but not least, it's the future readiness. Like how do we get ready for the future for ourselves and how do we help our, our organization get ready? So um, this, you know, I, I think it's really gr a great framework to guide our, um, the professionals um, in, you know, uh, our professionals to um, navigate through this tough time. So I want to invite our um, uh, panelists. Um, so maybe Edward, you go first. What do you think are the most, maybe just pick one. I know we, we talk about this, there's a lot, but maybe just pick one. What do you think is the number one capability um, that is most important for us to have uh, to navigate through this tough situation? Uh, thanks a lot for the introduction uh, just now. Uh, actually, uh, I was so lucky to communicate with Elian uh, Beaker today. Uh, we discussed, uh, Elian Beaker is the uh, key uh, contributor of the new uh, uh, capability model. So if you mentioned one uh, important point, we changed the name from uh, competence model to capability model. 
So, so this is a different, uh, this is a big, uh, the biggest uh, difference uh, uh, between the old version and this uh, updated version. So capability model uh, is ready for, not, not for uh, current, but also for uh, future. So I would like to emphasize uh, the first uh, 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 time to mention uh, this uh, uh, with this version. So future uh, readiness. I think uh, uh, because uh, we are discussing uh, how to overcome uh, this crisis. So what I'm thinking is, uh, you know, uh, Asia Silicon, China is ranking number one uh, so far. Uh, I'm thinking how to ensure my organization keep the leading position in the future continuously. So uh, what's the gap? Uh, so maybe uh, three years, five years later. So can we keep the uh, leading position? Uh, so this is what I'm thinking. Uh, and uh, that's why I initiate uh, many uh, new projects. Uh, for example, I built up uh, the top platform for all general manager and uh, senior uh, directors to gather together. We will spend uh, three days uh, to challenge ourselves. So uh, what's our strength and uh, what's the weakness uh, capability uh, in our organization and uh, mm -hmm. how to uh, grasp the potential opportunity and uh, what's our innovative uh, business model uh, to uh, to, to improve the AstraZeneca adaptive capability, the organizational adaptive capability from now. So mm -hmm. I think future readiness is not only important uh, uh, for, 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 for current uh, situation, but also uh, very, very important for the future. Okay, that's very good, future readiness. Okay, uh, Jenny, what about you? Yeah, as a, you know, TND, um, person normally we will you know like uh, invest some more time in others but forget ourselves so i want to focus on uh, one point uh, building personal capability like uh, during this uh, pandemic or whatever we call a crisis how we can have a uh, lifelong learning and then you know uh, in chinese sir uh, we always say that uh, crisis uh, stands for uh, opportunity how we can convert uh, those challenges and the crisis into opportunity so that's linked to uh, lifelong learning. So as a professional TND person, we need to reflect ourselves during this time and also even look back uh, for the several months what we have done and like what works best and the work works the uh, uh, work works well and the work can be done differently or do better. Uh, of course, we don't want that pandemic come again, but we have to get ready for that. So it's a actually a kind of a uh, reflection um, as adult learning and also I think uh, for lifelong learning uh, we, we should uh, take every opportunity uh, crisis opportunity to see that you know uh, will we leverage those resources we have and then also the skill set we have to uh, either upskill ourselves or even rescue ourselves I, I think it's a lifelong learning journey okay that's very well said i think uh, for developing others we first need to develop ourselves um so i think that has the learning mentality and continue to develop ourselves are really critical um so i know we are a little bit running out of time of our discussion but i think we have been incorporating a lot of discussions along this um uh, before we close up and hand it over to tina just for questions i just maybe ask you guys to uh, have one sentence what you want to share with the audience uh, like your tips. Jenny first. Okay. Uh, I just want tips, you know, uh, we are all together, you never alone. And the, how can we make our, um, us a safer, stronger, and agile? Okay, great. Thank you. Edward? Be yourself. Mm -hmm. And beyond current crisis. Okay, be yourself and beyond current. Maybe be yourself and beyond. Yeah. <laughs> beyond yourself. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. Uh, with that, uh, Tina, let me turn it to you to see whether we have any other questions. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, everyone. I just want to say a big thank you to uh, Edward, Ray, and Jenny for this um, insightful discussion. I really enjoyed it. So I'll just go through to see if we have any questions. There's a question for Jenny. Um, do you have a field sales team and how are they handling sales on the field? Yeah, we, we have a lot of field uh, sales team. So uh, during the um, pandemic, we actually developed a lot of process and the pro um, protocol. And one of the process and protocol is for field sales. You know, how can they protect themselves? And also we prepare like a toolkit for them to take uh, to carry with them uh, if they get out to the field trips. And even though, you know, at the very beginning, we just uh, restricted the traveling. Uh, we provide a virtual consultation and virtual uh, calling to our customer. But now it's getting better in China and then we free up a little bit and then we have to provide them those uh, toolkits and when they travel. And uh, of course, you know, from HR side, we have to uh, buy insurance for them and also you know, make sure uh, they are engaged and then uh, inspired to uh, travel out to the field site. Awesome. Um, I have another question. I think this is for Edward. Um, please, can you explain the OMO model a bit more? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, OMO uh, means uh, online merge offline total solution. So I think uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, this pandemic, uh, we um we, so. Uh, we don't uh, move uh, offline training content uh, to online simply. So we need to uh, improve the learning experience and improve the uh, return of uh, learning. So we designed uh, our content uh, uh, through uh, different uh, ways, including separate uh, as a traditional uh, uh, content uh, curriculum into several pieces. And uh, we uh, changed our slides uh, uh, into a small video and et cetera. So this is very, very uh, let uh, uh, all uh, learners uh, more convenient for their, uh, for, for, uh, for their learning. I think, uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand, we, uh, build up our digital uh, behavior, digital pool. So we collect uh, over uh, 2,000 uh, uh, coaching behavior pool uh, cases. And uh, we apply AI technology. So, and uh, before uh, training, they will receive uh, AI assessment. And with this uh, AI assessment result, they will receive uh, suitable content uh, through email and or WeChat and etc. Then uh, they, uh, they will catch up with their uh, knowledge uh, related gap uh, before uh, behavior uh, uh, learning. So, uh, saying generally, uh, online training will focus more on knowledge related. Offline training will focus more on behavior change. This is uh, this is a very very simple uh, method for your reference. Thank you, Edward. Um, I have another question. In what areas HR specialized jobs will evolve? In what areas? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like uh, I think uh, you mean. The question just to clarify: uh, In which area the HR job will evolve, right? Specialized job will evolve. Yes. Yeah, I think yes. you know one of the things that HR job will evolve is there uh, several things like a uh, um, facilitator. You know, as their HR, how we can facilitate on uh, their discussion and also facilitate rebounding discussion as well. And the second is the change man, change agent, we call it. And the the last thing is the cultural uh, revolution. Uh, we need to um, drive the cultural change and the revolution did during this uh, pandemic period and even after this uh, crisis. Okay. Um, how, how to measure productivity for employees who have worked from home during the lockdown free period? Yeah, I, I can't address this question. It's a, it's kind of a headache for us. <laughs> uh, 
you know, uh, as I just mentioned, there, China is not get used to the work from home, and they're also leader not to get used to assigning their job or their team's job over their uh, phone or over the webinar uh, web session. So uh, we have several tools, but it's not uh, robust enough. For example, uh, we need to have a policy, standard policy in place, and then to specify what's required uh, working from home and who can be working from home, how that's uh, uh, linked to their performance goals. And then I think uh, we also need to train our leaders sir, how to assign goal and uh, provide the coaching and the feedback over the virtual. So that's uh, um, you know, a kind of skill sets that they need to develop. The last thing I think are, um, you know, uh, measure the productivity. You can have some uh, AI tool or online tool uh, to link their um, daily work and to their um, project and the goal progression. So that's another way you can measure the productivity, but it's not easy. We are also learning how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Edward, do you want to add anything? Uh, I agree to uh, 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 what uh, Jenny said just now. So I could add, uh, add one point uh, that is uh, uh, if uh, you, uh, we should uh, ask ourselves. Uh, to ensure every project we design uh, link with business uh, close, closely. So challenge ourselves, uh, what kind of action we take can help sales uh, close uh, quickly and uh, what's our added value. Uh, so if we give up this project, uh, what's the impact uh, uh, to the business and etc. We often challenge ourselves then because you know uh, with this challenge uh, our top manager team will raise uh, the request uh, about uh, uh, ROI and ROE. So, so, uh, so I, I think uh, we should uh, maximize our limited resource. So this is, this is for your reference. Okay. Yeah, Athena, uh, Ray, I just do you wanna, have anything? Yeah, wait, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, I just wanted to add one more point. I think as human beings during this lockdown and uh, um, you know, working from home period, uh, as a, no matter whether it's a leader or HR, we need to allow our associates to slow down a little bit, you know, not necessarily only focus on productivity. They need to spend time with their family and also they need to work out. Uh, to make sure they are healthy and mentally healthy and physically healthy so that they can focus on their work after they go back. I like how you mentioned that because the next question is uh, how do you deal with emotional resilience during this time? So I think we probably you can add into that. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's this is, a, I mean, what we have been seeing that in uh, at ATP the past seven weeks we've been working from home it's actually more exhausting than you work from the office uh, because you have more intense conversations every quick, very quick 30 minutes, and then you move on to the next one. You don't need to walk to different uh, meeting rooms and you don't need to, and of course, life and work all blended together. Uh, so I think, you know, um, you know, as Jenny said, if we are human being, I think one, you, you want to put a measurement to make sure they are doing their job, but also it's really important. I think more than important than ever is the motivation. Right, because if you, you know, like one of my colleagues, I think about, you know, everything you do, probably this one email you're doing is saving a job, is saving somebody's job. So when everybody have that mission uh, in their heart, and that is where, you know, you see, well, you don't really need to watching, hey, hey, are you doing your job? And people are motivated. I think that's the ultimate approach uh, for HR, for talent development is to motivate people. Um, but of course that, you know, it's important to have some measurement and, and also more important to give them tools and resources to do their job, uh, right? I think it, that's where I, I think where it's so important to support them emotionally and support the productivity, okay? I think we're at, at time already. Uh, so yeah. Tina, do you want to just close it up? Yeah. Yeah, there are a few questions. Um, I'd probably um, send, it, send it across to you guys and get your answers and we can begin the I think that you can feel later free to because share we are running over time. Uh, maybe um, if it, I were um, Jenny you guys are okay with that and uh, so people if you ha have other uh, additional questions uh, feel free to reach out to us um, yeah. and uh, we'll be happy to answer mm. yeah yeah okay. yeah
That'd be awesome. Um, again, thank you so much, uh, Edward, Ray, and Jenny, for all that insights uh, and for taking your time to do this. And uh, I just want to take a few minutes time to, to, to go to talk about two ATD conferences that's coming up next month. So first, as you can see, we have the Global ATD Virtual Conference running from the 1st to the 5th of June. And uh, we have a special keynotes from Ken Blanchard, Marcus Buckingham, Erica Davan, and Keith Farazi. So um, the, the conference is the conference has plenty of content, like over 100 hours of premium LD content. You get access on demand uh, from your home. You have you can have exclusive speaker interactions, and there's a unique virtual networking experience. And you also get to access this content 90 days after the event. So this is an amazing opportunity. And uh, we also have the virtual ATD Middle East conference which is running from the 21st to the 25th of June, 2020. Um, it has two days of conference program. Um, uh, this, yeah, it has two days of conference program and three ATD certificate programs. And it is a great opportunity for you to network with the local peers and understand the state of the region at the moment and how other organizations are dealing with and coping up with the COVID situation. And this is an awesome opportunity to for all of you to be a part of both the event, both the Global ATD Virtual Conference and ATD Middle East Conference. And we have packages uh, and bundles available. And for more information, I would suggest you can drop an email, just a one line to atdsales at informa.com to get more information. And with that, I just want to say a big thank you to all the participants and our panelists and speakers today for taking the time and joining us. And I wish you all a very good evening. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for Tina's uh, uh, organizing and the thanks we uh, facilitated this fantastic uh, uh, short uh, one hour. And uh, Jenny, so thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thanks, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.